Greetings, Malifaux fans. This is Crazy Carl from the Weird Forms, back with another Malifaux video battle report. Uh, today was a great game versus Chris, aka Twisted Metal. He was playing Nicodem with his avatar attached for the first time, and I was bringing along the Victorias with their avatar attached. So we had an avatar versus avatar game, which would be pretty cool, as you will shortly see. Here you can see the setup of the board. There wasn't a lot of terrain, but there was big terrain and lots of blocking stuff, we, so we thought it would be adequate, and it, it seemed to be alright. So we were playing a Dead Heat campaign, and I won the attacker as the Vix, so I decided to attack the uh, the capital region, I think it's region 9. So Chris was getting a bunch of free corpse counters, which was going to be pretty tough for me to deal with, but I thought I could handle it. We also had to deal with the ancient text event, because that was what the weekly uh, event was, so we have those set up. I think you might be able to see them on the board there. Mine was over by the Great Bunker, and his was, I think, by that big hill in the center. So Chris brought along Nicodem with his avatar, uh, four canine remains, a punk zombie, a necropunk, two crooked men, and two vultures with an eight soulstone cache. So he was aiming to get his manifest requirements very quickly. He had hold, uh, he had stake a claim on the hill that I was deployed near, and he had holdout. So with our escape and survive, he was just going to try and wipe me out, I guess. Seems like a reasonably good plan. I took a bit of a different stance. I also took stake a claim, but it was on the small round hill, which was next to his deployment zone. Uh, breakthrough, and that was it. And I had the Vix with eight soul stones, desperate mercenary to get the manifest requirement easily, student of conflict, as you can see here, two Ronins, and Von Schill. I kind of wished I had a librarian, but at the same time, knowing we had ancient text coming up, I didn't want to waste the essentially waste the points on it. I could have taken the librarian over one of the Ronins and the desperate merc, but I decided to go with that. So that was the setup, and here you can see our deployments. It, I, I was not really looking forward to this. This seemed a little rough. Um, Nicodem is pretty deadly, and as I would learn, manifesting the Vix could not be a good idea against him. But here you can see he just did a general advance. He used the Punk Zombie very effectively to slice and dice to kill off all three of his... What are they called? Cannon remains, those things, yeah. Uh, leaving him with a bunch of corpse counters, which he then used a rise on his first turn to bring them all up as, as Punk Zombies, so he had his manifest requirement very easily. I ended up just moving up the board with my guys. I just double moved with the sword with the gun vic, just straight up. Double moved the student of conflict, and then the sword vic cast sisters of, sisters in battle. Uh, got fury for the manifest requirement. Killed off the des the desperate mercenary. After I had a Ronin attack the desperate mercenary and trigger next target and move up, and that let the Ronin get up to the the book counter right away, which was pretty cool. Unfortunately, Chris was able to raise up a. Rotten Bell with Nicodem after using getting one of the corpse counters. He had so many grave robbers and so many fast grave robbers that he, was, he had no problem grabbing the corpse counters. I think he had four or five on turn one. It was pretty brutal. Here you can see a shot of the Ronins and Von Schill. Von Schill, he stayed back. I was thinking about just r driving up the guts and going in turn two to nuke the corpse counters, but I didn't want to risk him getting paralyzed and then not being able to slow to die to heal himself. So may have been wrong, may have been right. I don't know. So, what happened next was, uh, also that turn, Chris used one of his vultures to try and paralyze the gun vic, which didn't work out. However, the next turn, he was able to paralyze the sword vic with a vulture, using eyes and ears, by companioning with, with Nicodem, and he just flipped too high in his soul stone, I think he had like a 26, and I could get a 19, I wasn't really, I wasn't really interested in burning the soul stone and hoping to get it, so I just let it happen. And instead, used the student, I uh, just moved up the student conflict again, um, oh, no, 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 no. What I did is I used the Student Conflict to give the Gunvik fast, then had the Gunvik walk up, attack the Vulture, kill it, walk back, and then Sisters in Battle, or Sisters in Spirit, to move the Swordvik in front of her. So I set up the Companion Chain for turn three if I could win initiative, because I'd be able to manifest after walking around. And you can see the Ronin was finally able to pick up the counter, the, t the Ancient Text counter, after a bell had lured her away, and then the other Ronin moved up twice and moved in position to be able to charge or shoot or whatever. And Von Schill was at this time all, all, for the entire time for the first like three or four turns of the game just taking pot shots and stuff. So I don't know if he was really earning his points, but he was a threat and he was letting me project force and it, he gave me control. Like I had a control over a large portion of the board, which is pretty cool. However, the problems arose as you can see here. I manif I did win initiative turn three. I companioned all my guys. I gave the Gunvik fast. The sword Vic ran up, and for some reason I didn't just swap places. I put the other Vic within three inches. Which meant I walked again and then manifested as a two action, leaving myself with two melee expert attacks. I was able to kill off, I think, the punk zombie. I killed four or five models, maybe six, but I ran out of masks and I ran out of. I had crows to get the charge trigger, but I ran out of targets to charge because I was in melee range with everything. 
So Chris did a really good job with his positioning, and I got stuck, ran out of gas, and Nicodem was able to manifest, bring up his punk zombies, or sorry, bring up the the mindless zombies, which when he manifests, they're not corpse counters anymore, so I couldn't use Nick, I'm sorry, I couldn't use Von Schell to go in and nuke them, so pretty bad news for me, and he was very easily able to get rigor mortis off on the avatar, the victorious avatar, so that was pretty much the game right there. It was it, it was going to be an uphill struggle for me for the rest of the game, and I did the best I could. I had my Ronins uh, moving around the board. You can see the Vix stuck in there as they were for a while. I also possibly made a mistake. I probably shouldn't have companioned right away. I should have moved one of my Ronin into, com into combat with something, and then I could use the Vix spell to swap them, but what are you going to do? Lots, the, I'm still getting used to playing the Vix Avatar. Very powerful, but very, very tricky to use. So here you can see the, the Ronins are just trying to stay out of line of sight. That one's hiding behind the hill after getting some good attacks off in turn four. And I really needed to keep one of these models alive. I tried to keep the Vix Avatar alive for a while, so that would contribute to my stake of claim. But going, going forward, it just ended up not working out. You can see Von Schill moved into position with the Stuna Conflict to give himself fast, so he's able to move, take two shots, and then go back into cover, which would have been pretty which was pretty cool, but again, it's just not enough. Chris had too many mindless zombies, so I couldn't deal with Nicodem. If I couldn't deal with Nicodem, I couldn't project anywhere on the board. I couldn't get models anywhere safely, so but I did the best I could. It was it was a very, very rough game. Chris played it very, very well. I got some pretty cool shots and cool looking cool looking uh, combats though. So you can see my my Ronin here taking making a game of it. She was getting some she's getting attacks off and the the next target trigger is just so damn good. It's it's amazing and they they're so fast and they get to attack at the same time. It's just amazing. I I love Ronin so much. I will never take anything but Ronin with victories. That's a lie though. <laughs> but they they did a pretty good job. The Necropunk didn't a lot of Chris's guys kind of just in the way and they turned into corpse counters, which turned them into zombies, which was just fine for him because the mindless zombies make Avatar Nicodem really powerful. Chris got to a point where he was able to get two groups of zombies, and he was able to get across the board very easily. By across the board, I mean back and forth between two spots, basically piggybacking off of each mind group of mindless zombies. Very effective. So here you see the last photo. It's where I had to call the game because we had some severe thunderstorms and ended up having to finish early. I got a little bit of video of what the store was like after that, just for some uh, fun stuff. So I don't think either of us scored points off Escape and Survive because it's a weird it's a weird strategy and we didn't really feel like thinking about it. I lost out on my holdout because Chris was just able to neutralize my stuff and kill off the things that were in his deployment zone. Uh, I didn't get my breakthrough. He got his holdout, so he got two points on that. He didn't get a stake of claim because he just couldn't get fast enough. I didn't get my stake of claim. So it ended up being a very tight 2-0 victory to Nicodem and the Rezzers. So I hope you guys enjoyed it and enjoyed the little clip after this, and I'll see you guys next time. Yeah, losers. All right, Malfa fans, this is what happens when the power goes out in your friendly local game uh, store, and all you have are emergency lights and cell phones to play by. Chris and I were just playing our game, and this will be put at the end of the game. So you'll see that after the game. Uh, we ended up calling it, but these guys, I think, probably have a few turns left more than we do, so they're they're fighting it out. I I don't even know what's going on over there. <laughs> Apparently, there are a bunch of negative flips that were happening that were pretty cool. Oh, you've got a little stand that's useful, very useful. So that's the uh, dedication of the gamers at Jupiter Games. Let's see, you cannot see our board here because it's in the dark. You can see the emergency light over there. And the heat is going up because there's people here. And then we've got some people playing. We've got magic going on by laptop light and cell phone light. <laughs> excellent plan, excellent plan.